Hold up, it's the weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Shit, we crank it up again. Hold up, weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of The Weigh-In with Francis and Greg. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's a lock. Thank you to my Lord and Savior for another one. Without him, none of this would be possible. Greg, what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Everything is good on my end, you know. Happy Monday to everybody. And um, yeah, we're here to talk some boxing, man. We're blessed to be here. So um, let's get to it, man. So you know it's a it's a it's a it's a double good day because you have it's fight week, and then you have the post fight review, which is one of our main topics that we're having today. In case you don't know, now you do know. Main topics that we're having is Caleb Plant versus Caleb Truax. Yeah. Mike Polite Coffee versus Damani Rock. Ooh, and, then, <laughs> and then Joey Spencer versus uh I can't remember the name of his opponent. It the, don't matter. Yo. Because like, <laughs> he put work against his opponent. Yeah. Life lessons, what's good? What's going on? You already know. Let's go. Um, what you so, um, what's going on otherwise, man? Let's get it before we get into the, the topic. You know, what I mean, I let the people know what the topic is, get them a chance to get on in. What's going on with you? You know, what I'm saying the city, the crazy lockdowns happening here in Toronto right now. Um, yeah. and uh, you know, even even stricter restrictions with other things going on. How is it, um, over there? Because I know we're on different sides. Everything is good, man, over here. I know they put the travel restrictions on now. Now you got to get tested to go and come and. And all that, um, all that stuff. But I mean, I guess it is what it is, man. We got to rock with it. We got to work around it. And um, I mean, at least we could still make movements. But it's just that you know, we just got to do it a little differently. But it's all good. I hope everybody's doing their best to stay safe and you know keep themselves clean and protected. And you know, hopefully we get through um this this stuff uh, shortly, man. But um, everything is good though, man. My family's blessed. We've been doing good, avoiding everything as we can so far, man. So. It's all good, man. How things on your end? Um, things are are blessed, you know. I I work, and I work. That's really it, you know. What I mean, I don't really do anything yeah. else, you know. What I mean, so for me, it's just um, just putting in the work. So yeah, the, the what's happening outside with you know the closures and the curfews that we are dealing with, all those things mm-hmm. don't really play a factor for me. Unless I'm trying to go out and have a great meal, which, you know, they have Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes and DoorDash and all these different things. Or the kitchen. You know what I mean? Get in there and chef it up and make it work, man. So, um, But for some people, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough right now. Yeah. You know, you don't get an opportunity to get out uh, and have meetings or, you know, um, celebrate uh, special occasions with family. Exactly. Those things uh, are, are taken away right now. You got to do it through Zoom and, and not being able to touch and and, and and feel and get the emotion and energy of of, yeah. of of love that you can feel is is um is being messed right now. So I just hope everybody out there um, stay safe, man. Stay safe. Uh, stay motivated. Stay mentally strong through this time. And we're going to get through it together. I know, you know, you can't get outside and stretch your legs as much as you like and express yourself. But um, we're going to make it through together. As long yeah. as we just remember doing you know, all the small little things like wash our hands and, you know. I hear that, man. I just hope this makes people appreciate each other a lot better. You know what I mean? We haven't been able to get together like we all want to. So um appreciate one another. And that's the main fact, man. This is the way in show. Um, Don't forget to uh, smash the thumbs up button on your way in. And also tell a friend to tell a friend. That the Wayne Show is live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Also, go check out the YouTube channel, the Wayne, in um, and the Instagram page. Also, follow and and like all the photos because um, we be putting in 
major work and um have some dope interviews and some dope content that's coming your way that yes. you're not gonna want to miss um also you can call in because the line is open uh the number is uh 914-205-5532 there you go so yeah man you want to um you want to get started with um the fights on the weekend you want to go backwards or forwards you want to start with the big one nah let's start with joey start with yeah <laughs> wow no that fight ain't much to say about that man he knocked that boy around and he looked he looked good doing it you know that knockout the knock sorry the first knockdown just kind of came out of nowhere man just a one hit a quitter knocked him down and um <laughs> it was funny to see his i don't remember his opponent's name but you know he was complaining like no nah, i'm good like what you mean i'm good and he's there staggering all over the place man it's like no you're not good i think the ref even threatened to take away uh his <laughs> first there because he was like you know wilding but <laughs> yeah man that was just um good performance man i mean what can you say but I for mean, me the part that got me the most though yeah. not to cut you, the part that got me the most was the yeah. the rabid punching like after he got dropped he got almost, dropped yeah he, like, he got dropped and he got up like yo did you really just hit me like that yeah he was like giving him like a hammer fist on top of his head and yeah, he did, behind the head all crazy i mean those type of things is 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 to me is 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 crazy to see but yeah glad a young fighter like joey spencer was able to weather the storm right and um calculate and get this guy out of there i knew already that he was levels above above him based on the the betting lines they never really miss you know what i mean yeah it was crazy though like dude just went like he wasn't in the boxing ring no more it's like came a street fight to him you know what i mean like if he could have picked up that stool and threw it across the ring he probably would have done that too that's right what we're talking about right now in case you just jumped in we're talking about the card on the weekend the pbc card on the weekend that included Caleb Truax versus Caleb Plant, Mike Polite Coffee versus Damani Rock, and then you had Joey Spencer versus can't remember the brother's name, um, but out of New Jersey, he was out of Jersey. I know that for sure. Um, yeah. So shout out to him. So we were just discussing Joey Spencer. Were you guys impressed with the performance, or was the opponent not supposed to be in the ring with a Joey Spencer based on his skill level? Yeah, let us know, man. Drop some comments or you could call in and let us know um what you think about the fights on the weekend, man. Um they were they were good, man. It was a it was a good a good fight for Spencer. So shout out to him getting that uh not stoppage victory. Yeah, that stop victory was on point. Yeah. Yo, we're gonna move to um we're gonna move off of that fight and get on to the Mike Polite Coffee versus Damani Rock. Damani Rock being the fighter who out of Philly with uh the experience. Um, the pedigree, Mike Polite being an eight-year Marine, picking a box in late, built like a <laughs> built like a Mack truck. Yeah. <laughs> like a Mack truck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out of Florida, coming from the East Coast. So, like, what's your take on that fight? Um, you know what? I was I was actually very impressed with Coffee, man. Um his 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 skill level, his I don't know, his movement in there really impressed me, man, because it's um it's nice to see the big guys show that level of skill in there and that show the things that they could do, man. Like normally things you see from the smaller fighters and, and that uppercut uppercut to end the fight was just something else, man. Um, he just dropped like a ton of bricks and, and um, that's all that was said, man, but a good fight. I don't know what's up next for him as far as, um, you know, where he's in the rankings, but uh, definitely he's somebody to look out for, man um we'll see how far he could take it but a good fight real good fight what do you what, what, what do you think about it for me oh my god see, <laughs> i picked i picked personally mike polite to knock out damani rock i knew damani rock had experience but he had been out the ring for a while and mike polite just actually got a win not too long ago and for coffee hits hard you know what I'm saying? It's it's that type of uh it's that type of fight. So I knew if he had the opportunity to land the shots on him, that he would um that he would get him out of there. When it made it even more clear for me was when they were fight when they got in the ring and I seen the shape that Damani was. I was like, oh yeah, definitely. Mike Plyce is gonna put the pressure on and get him out of there. He's gonna throw these bombs and one of them is gonna hit him. And he hit him with that uppercut that his his chin touched his shoulder. 
That's some Deontay Wilder type knockout power. Boom. Good yeah. night. Amazing. Amazing yeah. performance by Polite. That actually, you know what I'm saying, put a nice light on his career right now, man. A nice little light. It's amidst everything that's going on. It shines a little light. Like, yo, we got to look out for, like, who's the next step up for Mike Polite? Who's that next person? You know what I mean? And and whoever that next person is, bring them on. Let's make it happen. Yeah, what is man, your take I, on that? I was, no, I agree with you, man. Like, it's one of those things, like, well, who's next? Because he's shown, he shown what he could do. So it's like, who want to get in there with him and, and see how they match up with that? Um, I don't know what kind of... I'm trying to think of a name that would be good for him to be in there with. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Um, what about dude that beat uh, Stavern on the weekend, man? Brian. You think he's ready for something like that? Brian, Brian. Who that? A heavyweight. Um, yeah, Do you see that fight on the weekend? Bermain Stavern. They fought for the WBA. Nah. Uh, yeah. Trevor, nah, is it Trevor Brian? Yeah, Trevor Bryant. They fought already? They fought on Saturday, man. Yeah. What? Yeah, he knocked out Stavern, man, in the 11th round. What? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. No, I didn't even know that. But, yeah, that's what's up, though. That's yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, you see how they shot it? Wow. Yeah, Yo, Stavern. So, you, you could kind of say, like, Stavern is... Is is he a gatekeeper or is he like worse than that? I don't, you gotta watch. He looked pretty bad, man. Did he? Yeah, at the end oh, of the fight, yeah. was, I didn't know he was forty three, man. I didn't know he was up there. Yeah, day. yeah. Yo, salute, salute, salute. Yo, if you're in here, man, jump in the chat and let us know how you feel. This is the weighing show, man. We're everywhere. You check us out. We're everywhere. Salute, man. Jump in the chat. Let us know. We're talking about Joey Spencer. We talked about Mike Polite Coffee versus Damani Rock. What would you think about the performance? Was it a performance that you enjoyed? What about it that, you know what I mean, made you want to keep watching? Made you talk about it the next day and the next day? What do you think? Yeah, Sir Bishop. <laughs> Sir Bishop saying Sir Vern needs to hang him up. Yeah, that's for sure, man. Right, right. He do, he do. Yeah. But why, why? But it, why? If you can still make money, it's, it's still a name. You know what I mean? You get knocked down and you get back up. Yeah, but for his sake, yeah, he probably gonna want to continue and still fight. But you know, from us on the outside, we're probably like, yo, you need to, you need to maybe stop. But I mean, if he can make some, few he could probably make a few more dollars fighting some lower level guys. You yeah. know what I mean? He's, he's still a name. Yeah. I mean, everybody else, to run, right? So and that's good for him. It's good for him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like he's young and up and coming guys like a uh, Jared uh Jared Anderson, big baby Anderson. Right. Uh, who else? Who was young heavyweight coming up? They can like, you know what I'm saying, go through from Mr. Vern. If they pass the test, then they're ready to move to the next level. Yeah, you gotta get that fuel. That get, they're yep, they're ready to move to the next level. So yeah, man. So shout out to everybody out there. That's what we talk about right now. Um, Greg just talked about Stavern losing. So um, it, you know maybe polite coffee will get the shot at uh, Trevor Bryan for that regular WBA title. We'd have wow. to check exactly how um it is in the rankings and whatnot. But uh, yeah, yeah. So Bishop just saying, I think for his overall health, he needs to rethink. The comp the competition he's facing if he still wants to continue. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he might fall into that gatekeeper journeyman category now where people kind of test themselves against him. You know what I mean? So, you know, that might be the role for him going forward. Yeah, 100. 100, 100 percent 100%, 100%. Um I'm I'm excited, man. I'm excited. My first guess is uh just jumped in the building. Okay, you know, we're gonna let it, yeah, we're going to let it rock and rip. You know, it's the weigh-in. You yeah. get a chance to call in, weigh-in on all topics boxing. The number to call in is 914-205-5532. We're going to have an amazing person mentally in boxing and business-wise in boxing that we're going to get an opportunity to talk to right now. And I'm going to let my man Greg... Um, 
do all that. Salute to everybody in the chat. If you have questions, please, please drop your questions in the chat. You know what I mean? Or you can call in and, and talk. You ready to go? I'm ready to go, man. So we're going we're gonna to bring on our guest in just a few seconds. But let me just give a few of his accomplishments on what he's about. He is the president of the Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame. He's owner of Below the Belt magazine. And he has the D.O. Boxing Show, if you haven't seen him. So there he is, Damien Acposio, man. Welcome to the weigh-in. Thanks. Thank you for having me. For sure, man. So um, just give everybody a little brief history on uh, just how you first got connected with boxing. Like, did you used to fight? Or, like, what, what's your history with boxing? Yeah, back in the uh, early 1990s, I joined a boxing gym. First boxing gym I joined was Scarborough Boys Boxing Academy. Okay. And um, are you guys hearing me okay in terms of the volume? Yeah. 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 Okay, awesome. Um, and uh, basically, I walked into that gym. Uh, there was a guy named Frank Bullard that owned the gym. He's a former uh, professional fighter. And um, it was a gym where there was a lot of great fighters already there. Paul Upshaw was one of the guys uh, as a heavyweight. And uh, Nikki Farrell uh, was also training out of that gym. Um, and I just didn't know anything, man. And they put me to spar first day and I just took my lumps and uh, yeah. came back the next day, took my lumps again. And I was just hard headed, but um, I enjoyed it. And, and, you know, once you stick with something after a while, um, you, you progress and you get a little bit better as time goes on. Mm -hmm. um, so did you? Oh yeah, you have that feedback. Do you have any headphones? I'm sorry. Do you have any you headphones? Have any headphones? Yeah. Yeah, we getting that feedback. Sorry. It's okay. No worries. No worries. Yeah, go ahead. Bro. Any other any other accomplishments that you wanna let the people know? Um. Yeah. So I, I fought off and on for about 13 years. Mm -hmm. Um and uh went to provincials um i started the boxing magazine in 1999 uh because there was a boxing magazine already that existed called punch magazine okay and i actually wanted to write for it i was begging the guy that did it i was like let me do anything for you because i thought it was an amazing magazine and he was like no i'm i'm gonna be stopping this so i was like okay if there's nothing else with canadian content i want to know what's out there and get some answers to um you know roadblocks that that fighters come up against mm -hmm. and um and that's when i started the magazine but since that it's evolved um you know i i took over the ontario boxing hall of fame in 2002 so i've been the president for over 18 years um and uh we've done boxing trade shows uh and when i say we i'm talking about uh, my team uh we put on events amateur shows um, I failed at trying to promote professional boxing in Ontario twice. Um, and I sponsored a show in, in, um, where was it, man, I'm drawing a blank now, but, um, I co-promoted, uh, a, a sponsored a show and then co-promoted a show in the U S okay. and, uh, and, uh, managed fighters and, and basically just a wide variety of things in boxing, all things boxing. I, I just love the sport and I'm looking to give back to it. Yeah. I love it. You got it. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, what got you into boxing? That's what, what, got me, what got me into boxing? Yes, sir. Oh man. Breaking up with uh, my high school girlfriend. <laughs> 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 I was in the dumps, man. I was, I was in the dumps and I was just like, I wasn't doing anything. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, one of my friends suggested, Hey man, why don't you just go to a gym? And, uh, I was struggling. I was like, I was just an angry kid in the first place. Um, so, you know, as a kid, I grew up in, I, like I ran away from home at 10 years old. I grew up in foster home, uh, group homes, moving from group home to group home. And so when I went to the boxing gym, um, even though I was getting my butt handed to me, I was actually able to like, punch out my emotions it was actually good therapy and got me in shape at the same time real quick real quick i gotta ask you a question just off off the topic real quick yeah you're right on it and i don't want to lose the moment can you tell the people that might not know that if you've gotten your ass whooped outside the ring the in the ring ass whooping is something totally different <laughs> that, that 
Is, can you explain to the people about that? <laughs> you, you know, you know, um, I I think boxing, in my humble opinion, I think everybody should join a boxing gym and have at least one or two amateur fights because it'll open your eyes. Like, you know, street fighting and, and, um, and boxing is two completely different things. And um, there's nothing like getting your butt handed to you by someone half your size. It's like, you know, when you're young, it's an enlightening experience. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead, Greg. I want to ask you, you talked about um, professional promoting. And I know I've been to a couple of, you've done some amateur shows. Yeah. So what were the difficulties that you had with promoting professionally? Because I know Ontario, there's been talk of it's been difficult to, you know, promote fights. So what obstacles did you run into trying to promote fights? Um, boxing and promoting professional boxing in Ontario with the previous commission was not only difficult, it was darn near almost impossible. Mm. And, um, you know, you had to bend over backwards for the commissioner. Um, so, you know, th there was the, the commissioner, um, the previous commissioner just did not want to have boxing and, um, mm. And, and there, there was so many things it, it, there was, you had to duplicate the purses. Um, so, wow. And, and you used to have to provide all this money up front as well for the show. So if you have a fighter on the show and you, you say you got one fight, you're paying both fighters a thousand dollars. You used to have to come up with, uh, two, $2,000 per fighter each. Cause you used to have to duplicate the purses. Yeah. And then you also have to ensure the belt. Uh, $1,700 per bout as well. You have to pay. Wow. So, um, it's an expensive venture. And then you got to, you got to secure the venue ahead of time um, to get the sanction from the Ontario commissioner. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you, if you have a large venue, it's, it's a huge amount of money. So just to give you an example, um, when I tried to do my first show in 2000 and it was either 2003 or 2004 uh, at the Hershey center. Yeah. Um, you know, my budget, I budgeted $80,000 for that show. And I did, and, and I came pretty close to do spending all that money. And that show didn't come off. It fell apart the week of the event. And, and, um, you know, there was, uh, there were so many factors at play, you know? So one of the things when I do events, money is not, is never an issue because even when I did that first show, I raised a lot of money. Like I had great sponsors I had Dundee wealth management, I had Bud's BMW from Oakville. I had a lot of uh, great legitimate sponsors. And when that show failed, I went in enormous debt and it taught me, you know what, don't rely on the show to make back your money. So now, uh, or sorry, since that time, whenever I do, would do a show, I would raise the money ahead of time, which is twice as difficult. But yeah. that way, if the show failed, I know what's going to go on. Because I, I put on a lot of shows. I put on a Golden Gloves tournament for the OBA. I put on, like, induction dinner. I put on numerous shows. And the reason why my events always come off is because regardless of whatever that show is going to cost, right. I raise the money ahead of time be, uh, before I do the show. Okay. I love it. Listen, man, we got a lineup of of, of comments and questions for you, uh, Damien. So, uh, um, or Mr. How do you say your last name? Akposio. But you can say it however you want. <laughs> Damien Akposio. You know what it is? You know what? Actually, I'll wait till you ask one of the questions and I'll piggyback. Go ahead, Greg, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, the comments and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you're getting a lot of salutes from everybody. Um, DC Prophecy says, um, salute to y'all and salute to Damien. Hardworking man right here. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, so, and Sir Bishop says, now salute to you, Damien, and Black History Month. And his question is, are you the first black president of the Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame? Yes. Yes. Originally, it was started in uh, 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's about five gentlemen that started it. Um, let me see if I can. I don't want to take too long to look up the information. Um, but there was... Um, Darrell Wambald, Joe Fallis, Rob Zuck, um, and and those were all kind of the founding fathers of the Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame. Those yes, guys came over from the Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame. Yes, sir. And um, they started it. I, I actually used to advertise for them in my boxing magazine. I gave them free advertisement, which turned into paid advertisement. And then we had a, a great relationship. Um, 
they some of their members started disbanding they went from five guys i think to three guys to one guy was doing a lot of the stuff primarily and then um and then initially they they turned it over to me um and then we signed off so it was originally a non-profit corporation and i ran it as a non-profit corporation for a couple of years and then i dissolved it ran it as a sole proprietorship and then absorbed it into uh, one of my corporate entities that I have right now. Whoa, that's awesome. Woo. Listen, quick question. What is your what is your family roots, if you don't mind me asking, like your uh, ethnicity? Uh, oh, um, my mom's from Trinidad. My dad's from Nigeria. Um, I was born in Toronto um, and basically um, grew up in government housing. Um, my dad was a career student, but not a good person. And I ended up running away from home at 10 years old. And, um, so my dad put me in the hospital at that, at that point, I was like, it's not safe, ran away from home. And then, uh, I was on the streets for a little bit and I got picked up by Catholic Jones aid. And that's how I ended up in foster care. And, uh, and from there, everything pretty much, uh, opened up and blossomed or was it just still a grind all the way? It was, it was still a grind because, um, you know, one of the things is when you when you're in group homes uh, and you're moving sometimes from city to city, you're changing schools. So I went to a lot of different schools, and um, and so once you kind of move from one school to a different school, it's very hard to catch up because usually they're teaching the next grade based on what you learned the previous grade, which is different right. for a lot of places. So I never did well in school at all. And at in grade 10, I just ended up just dropping out of school altogether. And then I, I always worked since that time. Okay. okay. You're talking about leads into one, a perfect question here. Life lessons said, um, you have a lot of things on the go. What made you start the most recent endeavor, the youth counseling? The, actually the youth counseling is about 25 years old. Okay. So um, I'll break it down because this everything is going to seem kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Because um, when I was younger and I lived at home, I didn't have any money, and um, so I used to I used to get this this kid that used to draw really well. This is like grade three or grade four. I used to get this kid that used to draw really well, and uh, I used to get him to draw characters that I made up. And then I would get this girl that her father worked for Xerox, make photocopies, and I used to sell them for 25 cents. And then I would try and at least sell about like um, four to eight of these so I could go across the street uh, during recess to buy a patty or a patty and cocoa bread from uh, the local <laughs> store. So I was always kind of into um, into business and, and, and trying uh, different things. So basically, when I ended up leaving, uh, I moved out on my own at 16 years old. And so when I was leaving foster care, um, I worked a lot of part-time jobs because I couldn't find full-time work. So there was times when I was working like three part-time jobs and um, I got into network mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. because the first time I ever paid income tax, they, they I owed money. And I was like, I think it was like a, a $900, which was like a fortune yeah. to me back then. Yeah. I was like, what? why am I owing money when I'm working my butt off? I, like, I know nothing about taxes, nothing or anything like that. And uh, I had an older friend who had a financial advisor and he said, go see my financial advisor so you can learn. And then, and uh, when I met the financial advisor, she was like, you know, you should just, you should get into some type of business so you can write off, um, have write offs so you can get money back at the end of the year. Right. And, um, and I was like, well, I don't know anything about business. And she's like, well, tr join a network marketing company and then you have five years to report losses. So from that point on, I started joining network marketing companies. I pay like $150 to join. I'd write off part of my rent. I'd write off my bus pass because I used to get a Metro pass. Yeah. I'd write off all these different things. And then at the end of the year, I would get like $1,200 back from the government. Right. So, so I joined all these network marketing companies and every three, four years, I, I joined a different one just so I'm claiming different losses. And right. since that time, it, I haven't really paid the government money because I just learning about business. Um, so, so that was one way that I kind of like, um, helped myself save money because 150 bucks to make 1200 bucks back at the end of the year was, was definitely worth it for me. Right. 
For sure, for sure. Let's get yeah, so, to the sorry, sorry. before we continue. Just don't want to let the comments go away. So Life Lesson said, clearly, a business mindset. Proof that your past is not a hindrance on you having um, a successful future. No, definitely not. Yeah, and saying yeah, you were a hustler from young, definitely, to get that cocoa bread and patty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know anything about business, but, um, you know, anytime I wanted to learn something, because I didn't even know anything about magazine publishing right. when I started, um, I, I would just go to the library, you know, library is free. I just go and read up on books, how to start a magazine, uh, like whatever it is that I want to do. And I always just look it up and then and then figure out what do I want to do. So, you know, right now I have. 14 businesses in boxing, small businesses in boxing, mm -hmm. and, and they're under two corporate entities. So one corporation has like thir 13 businesses in it. And then I have one corporation that's a newer corporation that, that houses one business. What are some of those businesses, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, the same thing, yeah. Um, so I got Below the Belt Boxing Magazine, which we talked about. That's separate on its own? That, that that's that's under the umbrella of uh the one corporation mm -hmm. so that one corporation um has the multiple businesses that's where also i have the ontario boxing hall of fame mm -hmm. um then i've got a free newsletter that i do for boxing community called the do boxing newsletter mm -hmm. um i got my youtube show as you said the do boxing show mm -hmm. i do the deal i do the boxing trade show I've got a uh, youth boxing scholarship, mm -hmm. um, which I give out annually. I got uh, deal media. So what used to happen is um, I would always be changing graphic designers. And um, so I just decided, let me try and bring the best designers that I have that are always working with me and just form a business. So when I'm not providing them with business, um, I can get them other work from other places. Right. So th that's kind of just how that developed. Okay. Um, so we do work for other promotional companies, other businesses outside of boxing as well. Um, Canadian Round Car Girls is a modeling agency that I started a couple of years ago, and I'm building the foundation of it right now. Um, I do training, like one-on-one -on -one, uh, training for boxing technique and strategy. Uh, deal promotions, which is uh, what I use to promote the different events. Uh, deal boxing sales, which is our website that sells online boxing equipment. Um, and I got the one-on-one -on -one counseling and, um, and then I've got the international boxing consulting under the one company, under the one corporation. Yo, you an animal. <laughs> yo, when, yo, when DC Prophecy said, yo, that's a hard working man. That, what are you talking about now? <laughs> yeah, yo, let me tell you something, David, Mr. Uh, David, let me tell you something. <laughs> I haven't seen Greg smile in a minute. I see. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Yeah, man. You know what? My goal is to be yeah. is to do what Dana White did to the UFC. Yeah. I want to do that to boxing. So, you know, my goal ultimately is going to be to promote. I, I have I have a, a a number of other businesses that I want to start too. But my lawyer was like, "Hey, Damien, let's let's tighten up." these things that we're doing and we can add more businesses later but let's just let's sharpen the axe right now and and especially during these times um you know where i got a lot of downtime um business is slowing a little bit um i didn't get a chance to put on the induction ceremony last year we're not going to put on one this year um so we're just sharpening the axe man you're going to see things get tighter and then ultimately uh when we promote oh my goodness it's going to be crazy <laughs> you, know, David, you, gotta it out, David. you gotta stop, man. You make me crush, man. <laughs> no, but for real though, um, listen, we got some more questions because honestly, I'm not gonna lie, Greg. Have you seen this questions line up like this before? Like, yo, know, this is you know, you, you know what I'm gonna say, man, because I, I love what you guys do. I love seeing businesses on the come up, and um, you know. So I was I was promoting that I was going to be on here. But what I want to do is at the end, when you guys select who um, the best question of the evening is, I will mail them 
the latest issue of Below the Bell Boxing Magazine. There you go. And I, I will mail them. Like, basically, people send whoever they select, send your information to these guys, DM them. Um, and and uh, I'm going to also send you not only the magazine, but this 20 year coin that we developed for the Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame. That's our 20 year coin there. Ooh, fire. Yeah, so I'll, I'll mail them both of that for contributing to um, to the show today. Thank you so, 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 so much, man, from, from all of us at the Wayne Show. Listen, I got to ask you some really some straight up questions because um, I've had my fair go with boxing in Ontario. I wouldn't say in Canada, but in Ontario, just as a journalist and as a reporter. It's now, a crazy scene. It's a crazy scene. Now, for me, yeah. let me give you a little bit like of a backstory for me. I've I've worked a lot of jobs and I've heard a lot of supervisors and managers and VPs and the way they talk, right? It's it's what you have to back it. So I decided, okay, let me go to school, do what I love, get my back. And so I got my journalism and radio broadcasting background. Congrats, man. That's awesome. So as I'm working through the boxing scene, I'm like, nobody's really doing, you know, anything for the scene in boxing in Ontario. Let me do something. And all I got was. <laughs> and I laughed because I never asked for a dollar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I still got. So I said, you know what? Okay, no problem. We're going to go at this another way. <laughs> we're going to get it in your head, but we're going to go at it another way. So we went to, you know what I'm saying, the big stage, and they welcomed him. We did it all we had to do. But the long story short, coming all the way around is what I'm saying, is that how did you find promoting in Ontario? What, oh, were, what were the pitfalls and what were the highs? You, you just lit some dynamite because I'm going <laughs> to give you some truth on this scene. Um, oh man, you know, when you said that, I was like, I know, I know what you're talking about and, and I hope you guys continue. I wish you guys much success because you guys are exactly what the scene needs. The more podcasts, the more, um, that we can have of this exposure, you guys are knowledgeable. Like, you know, I listen to your podcast. You guys talk about the fights. You're knowledgeable about the fights. You're giving guys exposure internationally. Now, the one thing I'll say about the Ontario scene is that that's the most unfortunate part um, is it's broken. It, it, that's, that's the best word that I can put. There's so many people that are very petty, jealous, and don't know how to work together. There's a lot of bullies in the sport of boxing in Ontario. And I travel internationally. I've been to fights, man. I've been to fights. Hold on, David, before you go, before you move off from that right there, I just want to add to it down to even trainers not wanting to work together. Like, yep. The people, I, I'm so yeah. confused. Like what? No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't be confused. It's real, man. It's the twilight zone. When you enter into boxing in Ontario it's the twilight zone because you'll see other industries that will work together, support each other. And, um, and it does not happen in boxing. There's, there's unfortunately right now what's happened in boxing over the years, cause I've been in this industry now for almost about 25 years and I see the backstabbing. I see the people talking about each other, people, um, you know, screwing each other over for a dollar. I could give you guys stories for days about that. And, um, you know, so, okay, so as an example, um, when I was coming up and I was fighting with Boxing Ontario, um, you know, I it, it took me about six six fights. I went to six amateur shows before I could get in my first fight because guys pull out or, you know, guys say they're going to fight and then they don't fight. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, um saying i can't get fights i just fought other places i went and i paid my own way to fight in the u.s and and right. I, I fought in australia i fought amateur fights all over the place i just paid my own way to do it um there there's there's not a lot of 
support within the community because if the community pool together to say send somebody um, to be a national champion um, to pay for their fare and, and everybody pooled together they could raise a lot of money mm. you know but everybody wants everything the easy way and and they don't want to support somebody unless they're getting something out of it immediately uh everybody's suspicious everybody they don't want you to steal their techniques when there's not much techniques to steal anyways we're not it's not like there's any champions like there's champions out here but i mean like you know there's not a lot of elite guys being produced right now right and and when you look in the past of, of elite guys being produced in kitchener you know um with guys like arnie beam or or down in cabbage they had a, a a a lot of coaches all working together right with, with fighters you know it wasn't just you know like you 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 know man it, it, it's hard to talk without calling names but i don't want to put anybody i don't want to put anybody on the spot oh, but 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 there's but there's a real lack of support and there's a real strong jealousy so even when i was promoting events i can tell you that i did everything for the boxing community even when i came out with my boxing magazine i used to cover guys for free I used to cover guys for free. I used to go to the gyms and then I'd be like, hey man, I want to interview you. So I call the gym, I get no answer. I have to show up in person. And then when I want to talk to somebody, they're making me wait two hours until they finish their workout before they speak to me. And it's like, I go to the US, I want to speak to Mike Tyson. I talk to a couple people, I see Mike Tyson. I meet with him, I shake his hand. Um, yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's, it's night and day. It's yeah. night and day. And any boxing fans, I would, I would strongly Man. suggest you go to the International Boxing Hall of Fame because Man. they put on a, a fantastic event. And so, you know, what, when I used to do the boxing trade show, I invited people to come down. I had a boxing magazine. I said, hey, man, anybody else that has a boxing magazine, come. Down. I don't care about competition because in my mind, I know that there's enough for everybody. When you look at food places, there'll be, you know, two for one and Pizza Pizza and Joe's Pizzeria all in the same friggin' a strip plaza and they're, all, and they're all eating and they're all eating. You know what I mean? Maybe Joe Pizzeria is going to go and eat even pizza pizza one day. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, so, so, you know, um, but, but there's a real kind of scarce mentality in boxing and a lot of people scared. So, you know, for me, I have a very tight, tight group. Um, there's a, there's a kid named Donald Wombo who had about 50 fights. He fought David Lemieux. Um, he's a, he's a fantastic coach strategist um he works full time now and you know his, his boxing involvement is with me and has been with me for the last 20 years he's like my right hand man just the two of us the amount of things that we can do and then i have a great team of of other people that work with me we're a small group but man like we rock the house when we put on events even if like whether we whether we pack the house or don't pack the house we have a great time because it's all good people we all love each other we all support each other they're doing an event. I support it. You know what I mean? My friend Donald Wombo, he did a world record attempt. I sponsored the event. That's what people, that's what, that's what friends do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You do, if you do, if you, if you have a, if you have a friend. So as, as an example, Donald Wombo right now, I'm like, man, I'm getting big, man. I'm like putting on too much weight because I'm making money and I'm like putting exercise to the side. So I was like, Donald, train me, man. I'm going to pay you hourly. He's like, no, like you don't have to pay. I'm, I'm going to pay you because friends should support friends in yes, business yes, that's not the person should. that you go and ask for something for free you gotta support them yes you should yes you should listen man let's get to the questions real quick because yeah. yo yo right. oh. i got mad questions but go ahead yeah, yeah. yeah. rafi ramirez 93 saying this is a powerful interview thank you for the knowledge and motivation um life lessons just it, she's amazed wow salute um sir bishop says damien i salute you for bossing up and keeping your your drive on beast mode and, encourage you to continue because you're inspiring many adults and you're definitely inspiring the youth thank you and um life lessons has a question how do you keep everything all together well i'll show you let me see here see this this is a journal i write down everything i'm not sure if you can even see man i write down everything yeah. I write down everything so i keep i keep track of everything on that journal too right can you show the name of that i'm sorry Bring up the journal again. I'm sure that's your name on the front there, right? This 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 um decal is from my yeah. friend Donald Wombout, Heart oh. and Hustle. Look it up on Instagram, Heart and Hustle. Um, he does this, man. Like the dude does a multitude of things. All I do, I surround myself with amazing people. 
That's all I do, man. Like, I walk with a small crew, but my small crew is like the A team on steroids, man. Like, yeah. these guys can do a multitude of things. Well, there you go, man. There you go. Anything else you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you the Shaquille O'Neal of me and everything. You got a tricky track, too? <laughs> like, when the restaurant coming? <laughs> when the restaurant coming? <laughs> Where's the restaurant coming? No, I salute your hustle, man. Honestly, I'm, 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 I'm impressed, and I love the way that my Lord and Savior lines everything up, man, because everything lines up and doesn't happen before it's time. And for us to connect is, yes, I'm going to leave it there because those things we'll talk about it off air. But, yo, honestly, promoting for some people, they might look at it and it's sexy. Mm -hmm. The inner workings of promotions, you might be like, nah, I don't need that headache. Give us a little insight into the, the, the promotional work of, of running an event, who you got to pay, who you got to take care of, how, how, how expensive it can be. Well, um, you can, there, there's a wide variety of, of um, expenses that, that, that can come from doing any event. So what, what I do, so that's one of my businesses. I started DO International Boxing Consulting. Um, where I break down because I've been involved in everything from promoting pro shows to amateur boxing shows to just straight out events, galas, dinners, fundraising. Um, so give me one example and I'll, and I'll go in depth on that. Are you talking about promoting amateur shows or pro shows? Amateur shows, amateur shows promoting amateur sh amateur amateur show. in, in Ontario. Yeah. Okay. So it, like if somebody is promoting an amateur show, it depends on where they want to get the venue. So a lot of, um, gym owners, they already have the gym, they already have the ring, that expense is already taken care of. If you're going to rent a venue um, in the GTAA, you know, you want you want to get about 200, 300 people there, you're looking at about a thousand to two thousand dollars, depending on how nice the facility is. If you're looking at renting a ring because you don't have a ring, you're looking at anywhere from 950 to 1200 to rent a ring from one of the reputable people that rent rings in the in the province of Ontario um then you got to pay the sanction so before there used to be the Ontario Boxing Association and Boxing Ontario but now there's only one governing body in Ontario which is Boxing Ontario so the the cost of the sanction is around $225 to put on the show, but then you got to also pay the officials. So you should, and you got to pay mileage. So that amount can vary depending on where they're coming from. So you're looking at anywhere from 400 to $600 that you need to set aside. Then you got to get your trophies or plaques that you're going to give out. Um, if you want fighters to come back, if you're going to do more than one show and you want fighters to come back, you should give out some nice trophies that will set you back maybe two, $300. If you have about eight fights on your card. Now, you always got to plan for, if you want eight fights, you should plan for 11 because you're going to get dropouts from people getting injured, sick. They don't, people don't want to fight the person that they're matched up against, whatever, something happens. Um, and then you're going to, it depends on how fancy you want to go. You can show up with a ghetto blaster and just DJ it yourself, or you can uh, hire a DJ yeah. and uh, yeah. Have, that may run you 150. I wouldn't suggest lights for an amateur show because that gets pricey. Um, and um, you're going to have to pay the doctor. The doctor's fee is usually anywhere from 450 to 600. Uh, let's see. And then if people are coming from a distance, like if, um, if you're throwing a show in Toronto and, and you got a club coming from Sudbury, you may want to give them some gas money or like, you know, just help them out because they're coming a distance to, to provide for your show. And then after that, it's going to be up to your advertising. So people, some people will just do social media advertising. Some people will just do word of mouth. When I promote a show, I'll do posters, social media, a little bit of paid. Um, and just kind of, I, I like to kind of hit all facets when I'm promoting a show. And then the cost of printing your tickets, you could do through Ticketmaster, which is pretty cheap, Eventbrite, um, or you could go to uh, a printing company and, and get a specific type of, of tickets printed. So all in all, 
to put on a, a on an uh, average amateur show, maybe three to five thousand dollars will get you a good amateur show. And you need and you need the people to come in not only to you know what I mean at the door to make your money back, but uh, whatever refreshments that you were serving to help to make the money back. Yeah, like it, it depends on where you are. Like if you're in the GTA, good luck getting the alcohol. If you're outside of the GTA, you have better luck getting the alcohol. Um, a liquor license will cost you about $150. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention also, insurance for the venue. So if you have a venue that seats about 200, 300 people, your insurance is probably going to be 150, 200. And it's always good to get um, insurance. You're, you're insured with your sanction um, you know, for the boxing match, but it's good to get insurance for the venue. I, I always insure myself up the Yahoo because it, I don't want to think about anything if somebody gets hurt or something happens it's 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 better to just pay the money um on the front end okay man then <laughs> damien dropping mad gems mad information yeah. on us right here go ahead with the question from sir bishop because i had something i had to keep going but i'll keep going yeah all right sir bishop uh can you share with us how much love god and how that makes you feel when you continue to receive tremendous blessings um, so, you know, th there's two things I always shy away from talking about religion and politics, but I will tell you that my prayer is only two words every day for like the last few decades. And that's thank you. Yeah. You know, I don't ask for anything because I got, I got a brain, I got two hands and I'm breathing so I can work. And that's what I do. You know, um, you know, I have a belief that um you can do anything you put your mind to you know is, is and, and if you if you can't get the answers if you cannot figure out what to do you don't need money you need resourcefulness which means if you can't figure it out or you can't figure i'm one of the few people that's making money in this boxing industry wow. and, I'm, and i'm including professional promoters because a lot of these guys they front but it's not their money that they're playing with Whoa. Rel relatives are, are fronting them or they're getting money from other means like you know what i mean and again i don't need to call out anybody because their business doesn't affect my business right. i don't care like you know there's i design my life and my businesses where nothing impacts me nothing impacts my money wow. if the boxing community doesn't want to support me when i put out a magazine now i sell anywhere from 200 to 400 issues in the first week. So, and, and they're not, and it's not the boxing community buying my magazine. It's just people interested in boxing and my supporters because so, my, yeah. my stuff is motivational. When you look at my covers, you're not seeing the guys that are fighting on the scene today. I'm putting people that I'm inspired by, which is sometimes amateurs like this young lady here, man, you know, mm -hmm. going, going to school, um, you know, training her butt off, like, man, incredible people that's that's what i put on the cover you know that's why that's why i follow and I, and i put i put stuff like i tell people how i did things while you're on it give us a little bit uh more about the magazine how did the magazine come about and um your your passion for writing um again i i i always kind of um was creative so i would say i was like a kinesthetic kid in school because I was always like a C and D student, um, but I was always very creative. I came up with my own comic book characters in school. Um, you know, I used to get in trouble for talking in class, me and my friends. So I made up like a sign language that I just can't kind of came up with between me and my friends. So we wouldn't talk, but we'd be able to tell jokes to each other during class. And um, and then uh, I started doing hip hop when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and ended up getting a record deal with Sam the Record Man. Um, okay. So I was always, I was always kind of getting, I was always writing. I was always writing. I was writing music. I was writing something and I use it as a form of expression. Okay. So I didn't know anything about writing except that I love the sport of boxing. So I just wrote and then my writing got better. I, again, it's one of those things as you do something um, over and over again, you, you get better at it. Yeah. But when I started the boxing magazine, my very, very first issue, I did at Medallion Press, which was at the basement of Boxing Ontario. Okay. That, that was the printer that I used. And, um, you know, I spent my life savings doing that first issue. I spent like 5,000 bucks, 
um, I did a whole bunch of issues and it was all in black and white. Yeah. And uh, I was just throwing everything together. And um, and that, that definitely wasn't sustainable because at that time I was selling it for $3 and barely anybody bought my magazine when it came out. Everybody's like, good job, good job. But then when I tried to sell it, everybody wanted it for free. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, and then I got a couple different sponsors. I got Polak Sports before they went out of business. Wayne Bork's Boxer Size was paid advertising for a number of years. Um, so I got a little advertising here and there, which helped me put it out. Yeah. And then I would work and subsidize it. Okay. And then I, and then I, I did a contract with Chapters in Indigo in 2000 to put the boxing magazine in every Chapters in Indigo bookstore. Nice. Uh, in, in, in uh, Canada. How was how was that deal working out? That deal, um, it was okay. But then you learn about you know where the sharks are in business because <laughs> the distribution company took a cut. Chapters in Indigo, so like the distribution company took thirty percent. Plus, I had to pay them what it was a five hundred dollar membership fee annually. Chapters took thirty wow. percent on every magazine, so I'm left with thirty percent at the end of the day off yeah. of what sold, and then. They charged me for barcodes. They charged me for sneezing. You know what I mean? So by the end of it, it's like <laughs> they're mailing me a check six, six six months later for like, you know, 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay, everybody's making money off this thing except me. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it was great advertising and it was great yeah. for the exposure uh, for the number of years because I, I, I maintained that contract from uh, 2000 to 2016. I love it. And now I just distribute it myself. That's awesome. That it, yo, that's that's a story in itself, man. We got a few um comments in the comment section that says, "Dang, I need to get my circle up." That's from Life Lessons. One hundred. Your circle is um off the chain, and then uh, Life Lessons also said you have to be really motivated to put a show on because that's a lot of commitment, dude. Financially, emotionally. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the whole thing too is, um, you know, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, but the whole thing about it is, um, there's, there's a guy named Vince Bagnato who is a legend in Ontario boxing. Right. So th this guy did so many things. Uh, I can't even get into it right now, but the one thing I'll say, I like, I got a lot, so much love for this guy named Vince Bagnato because in uh, 98, I met I saw, I saw met with him. I was training at Sully's gym. And then I told him one day, I said, man, I'm going to start a boxing magazine next year. Right. And this is a time when nobody's supporting, nobody's, you know, doing anything or even believing that you're going to do something. And he reached into his wallet and he gave me $100. Nice. And he was like, man, when you come up with your first issue, come back. I'm going to send you to another friend of mine to get another 100 bucks. And that was so inspirational to me because I was like, man, this guy doesn't know me from Adam. Right. You know, this guy, we just had a, such a generous spirit and um, he just seen me training. Like, you know, I'm just, I was just like wide eyed. Like, I didn't even know how I'm going to do it. You know, I'm just yeah. talking out my ass basically. And, um, and he gave me and he gave me a hundred bucks and I was like, man, I got to make this thing happen. And then when I made it happen, he invited me to the Shaw festival and, um, and uh, Fitz Vanderpool fought that night. And he won the I, the WBF world title from yeah. Stephen, beating Stefan Johnson, yeah. and uh, and that's the photo that I used on the cover of my very first issue. Okay, you know what I mean? Just to honor that guy's generosity and belief in me, because nobody believed in me back then, you know. So, um, so so basically, uh, fast forward. Well, they believe the now, though. Sorry, but they believe now though. Yeah, they, they believe they, now. There's they there's, believe there's, now. there's a proof. <laughs> the proof is there now. So yeah. it, I stopped the magazine in 2008 because the when the market crashed, my ads ran out. I, nobody was advertising with me. Right. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this again. And then um, I got my finances straight 2013, relaunched in full color, glossy paper. But what I did this time is um, I, I said, you know what? This time I'm going to sell the content mm. because getting advertising i was trying to get companies bear companies and every time i sit down with executives or people they'd be like man you know what i got screwed by boxing so many times like one 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 bear company al alcohol company peter bullet jr ran great lakes brewery fantastic guy right. fantastic guy and um like you know he's the guy's been like 
used and abused it because he loves boxing. He supported it. Um, so, you know, it was very difficult for me to get a lot of legitimate businesses on board. So I was like, you know what, if this magazine is going to work, I'm going to sell the content or if I can't sell uh, content and I will still want to put out the magazine, I will sponsor it, but I'm going to put what I want to put in it. I'm going to put myself in it and I'm going to promote my own businesses because if you believe in something, you should be willing to finance it yourself. You should put your money where your mouth is. So I was like, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. No, you know? And that's where you see, 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 see me on the cover here. Blood out. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because I'm, I'm, I'm worth it. You know, and, and, and the thing is, um, you know, if people want to use the form that I've developed and put blood, sweat, and tears into, they can pay. I post my ad rates up, so there's no surprise. You want the cover? $2,000. Can't afford it? Throw a party, ask your mom, whatever. Get it done, you get on the cover. If not, then you know what? Try other free mediums, man. Try CP24, whatever. Try and get advertising any way you can. But you want to get in my magazine, you got to pay. Or you got to be oh, part wow. of my team. Right. I love it. I want to ask you, um, with the Ontario Commission changing, man, is, is professional promoting something you'd get back into? I'm definitely going to get into professional promoting. Um, okay. I've been in talks already with professional fighters in the U.S. Um, you know, the reason I, I haven't made a move yet, I'm in a financially better position now than I was even back then. And, um, just as an example, like everything I pay for now is cash. I haven't owned a credit card in probably about seven years. Um, I live well, well, well below my means. And, and I work like crazy and, and I'm not a materialistic person. Like I, you know, I wear like cheap shoes, man. Uh, all my clothes almost have holes in them unless my, unless it's my custom stuff. I like, I wear a lot of my own custom stuff as well. Um, my, my, my thinking was because I didn't get support in the, in Ontario boxing. Mm -hmm. And every time when I tried to do something here, there was a lot of kind of sabotaging going on. I was like, let me take away the excuses because I don't want to blame nobody. The the I There's been people that have ripped me off for thousands of dollars in the boxing industry, but I take accountability for that because I let them do it. So I'm like, okay, man, that's okay. It cost me 2000 to know you're a snake. I'm cool with that. It cost me 500 to know that you're not a, a person of integrity. I'm cool with that. So my strategy now is I'm going to build up into um, all the parts that I need surrounding boxing which is what i've done with the round card girl modeling agency and Thank and all the different things wow. so that when i do a show i control all aspects of it yeah. so i don't need to go to anybody and say hey man i need this or that yeah. gloves or whatever it's all coming from my business it's all coming from my business all coming from um you know companies that i own uh i'm i'm buying stuff you know from myself my suppliers are happy with me and uh, I'm making everybody that's around me money. So when I do promote, um, you're going to see it, like, uh, you know, again, oh, the, we don't see for sure. I, I'm, I've been doing this for 25 <laughs> years and, and all I've been doing is growing. And so, you know, when I tell people, be careful where you get your advice from and, and research the people you get your advice from, because all my money is my own money. Nobody gave me. Nobody, nobody gave me anything. Um, all everything I have, I earned it. Oh, man, uh, David. <laughs> and and um, you know, when when I do promote, I'm gonna have all sides wrapped up, including the fighters that fight under my management and promotional company. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna promote, but I'm gonna do it proper. And I, and and the thing is, I'm taking my time because I want to do right by the fighters that I do have. You know, when I get fighters on board my team and my promotion um whether they win lose or draw they're not going to get dropped if they have a couple losses with me i'm going to be educating them and and um you know they're going to they're going to make money even if they if they're an all and five fighter in my stable they're still going to be with me until they decide to leave and they're going to make money every year with me and i'm going to have a plan for them when they leave a boxing or when they leave competitive boxing, they can work within my company. They can do something else. And we're, we're all going to build together. Okay. 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 Wow.
Wow, wow, wow. Tons yeah, of information. Listen, problem, man. we got to bring you back like again, maybe another time, because a lot of questions we didn't even get to ask. Like, there's so much information to get to because you're so knowledgeable. One, about boxing, period. Two, about boxing Ontario, you know what I'm saying, which we're trying to build. And then we didn't even get to boxing Canada and the role they play. A part ass, of- man. Ass, man. I'm, I'm pumped, man. I work today, and, and, and I'm still ready to get it. So uh, I'm, I'm up. I'm awake. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to chat. And I'm ready to answer some questions. All right. Go to questions from the people real quick, Greg. Yeah, let's get through some of these comments and questions. Um, life lessons said <laughs> backward business, them teeth. So that's for sure, man. You got some thieves out there, like you were mentioning. So one of the questions is um, on the before that, the one before that. One, what the Sam or Sam the record man, mm-hmm. neon sign is a, is Toronto history icon, that's for sure. And then um Did you hear that one? Did you hear that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I performed I performed at Exhibition Place, um, and we got paid by uh, June Rollins, which was the mayor at that time. Sam the Record Man, cool dude, man. Love it. Nick. Then, um, life lessons say, yeah, I bet they're b- believing now. For sure, man, you're doing a lot, and um, <laughs> everybody's seeing it, man. <laughs> so a question from Sir Bishop. Do you ever put the gloves back on and uh, get your good old-fashioned boxing workout? Oh, yeah, um, because I still train fighters. You know, I train fighters. I train amateurs and pros. Um, I just had a 19-year-old uh, that I was training last year, um, and I was the during the lockdown, Burlington wasn't locked down, so I went to no excuse and was training him out of that gym. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, I, I, train, uh, I train anybody that wants to be trained. A lo- there's a lot of people. A lot of people, my clients, are people that are not fighters, though. You know, they just want to know how to punch properly and stuff like that. So I charge fifty dollars an hour for boxing lessons, and you know, I teach them, you know, how to put, how to make a proper fist. Um, you know, keeping their their wrist very straight when they're when they're punching, whether they're punching straight, an uppercut or a hook. Um, how how to torque their body so that they're moving their hips uh, when when they're in their stance. You know, you're throwing a hook. You're you're like putting out a cigarette with your front foot the way you twist. You have your, your elbow on a 90 degree angle. I get very specific. And, um, and you know, I, t- I talk a lot about defense because everybody thinks boxing is just punching and, and nobody's spending any time on um, learning the game and learning the art of defense because defense is what's going to give you longevity in the sport. Unfortunately, a lot of guys get world-class conditioning now because they're they're concerned about the abs and stuff like that. But what's happening is we got a large amount of guys that are taking a sustained beating because they're in such phenomenal shape, but they got no skills. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They got great endurance. <laughs> they're, they're, they're in amazing shape. You know the abs are popping out. You know, but they're not. But they're not moving their head, man. And they're just they're taking all those punches because they're strong enough to stand up and take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got another question from Rafi Ramirez, ninety three. Does your consulting company offer training programs or mentorship? Um, you know, as far as mentorship goes, I don't necessarily, um, if, if somebody wants to learn something, the best thing is to come and work with my team. You know what I mean? Um, you, if you want to learn about a promotion, come and work with my team and, and, and just come and help out in any area you can. You're going to learn because I don't keep any secrets. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm very straightforward with my team. Um, you know, I, I take on all the costs of anything that I do. Um, you know, most of my team gets paid for whatever they do, whether it's photography or whatnot. Um, if I'm asking somebody to volunteer, then, uh, then they're volunteering. Um, but you know, somebody's new, that's what I would expect. I would expect them to volunteer first. A lot of people want to get paid right out the gate. And it's like, you know, why would I pay you when, when, if, I would pay. I would rather pay somebody that's been riding with me for five years, ten years before I pay some stranger. No, 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 no. You know, my team gets taken care of first, always. And then life lessons has a comment: fool me once, shame on you; fool me twice, shame on me. I guess the stuff you had to deal with with um, you know, boxing in Ontario, all those snakes that you mentioned. You know, you know what? It's life, man. You know, the the whole thing about it is, it's life. That's why I don't. You know, one of the things that will suck up a lot of energy is is um, being angry yep. and, and and vengeful. 
you know, for me, I have no place for it. I don't, I don't care because, you know, like I've made, because I've been so dedicated to boxing and I never let those instances slow me down. I've hit like seven figures in boxing. You know what I mean? I'm doing so well right now. And, um, and like, I, the whole, the, the, anyways, the, the proof is in the pudding. I can't do the things that I'm doing if I wasn't making money. That's a yeah. fact. That is a fact. Hey, listen, real quick. Um, I just wanted to know why is it easier to make money in the Woodstocks, the St. Catharines, the the Burlingtons, the Stratfords, the Kitcheners, than it is to make in the GTA eight? No, no. Making money is about your team and your strategy. So and the reason why I ask because I know you've done some shows on Woodstock and stuff like that. So I want to know um the reasoning behind it. Yeah. So when I went out to Woodstock, so basically um I've promoted events at numerous places. And when I when I um so okay, I'm gonna name some names anyways, man. Forget it. Because <laughs> because I can't tell the story properly without naming names. So Hansa House is one of the places that I did events, right? So okay. I've done I I've done at least one show a year at the Hansa House for about 16 years. Okay. And um they never let me get the alcohol. Um they served alcohol at times and they made me pay security, even though I don't get a cut off the alcohol. Wow. And, and even though I've demonstrated 16 years of loyalty to that hall. I've never gotten a break on rental at any time. So at, at a certain point, I and I did it there because they had a great hall. It was, they, they renovate it regularly. The washrooms are nice and clean. Um, there's tons of parking. It's off the highway. It's a great venue. I love it. That's why I kept going back there. Yeah, um, and that's why I avoided it. Um, uh, Boston Pizza, I rented out the restaurant for yeah. a couple hours um to do the uh one of my hall of fame dinners and i paid in advance and i knew the owner he changed the owner sold the restaurant by the time my hall of fame event came up and even though i paid in advance for steak dinners and all kinds of stuff the new people that came on didn't have enough servers people got served stuff late like you know and i was like man i feel taken advantage of yeah and you guys are, you guys are charging me top dollar for stuff so um, the reason why I went out to Woodstock is because one of the people that was working with me at the time suggested that I do something out there because he was living out that way. Mm. And, um, and so I met with the mayor there and we became friends and he was so open. And I don't know if that's a case of it being a small town or the case of that. I just ran into a genuinely good person. Um, but one of the benefits was I was able to get the alcohol out there as well. Um, through my connection with him, he suggested the places that I could go to that I could get it for a reasonable rate plus get the alcohol. And so when I did my first event there, I made a lot of money. So I was like, when you got success or you or you make money, then you go back. And that's why I went back to Woodstock the following year and went to a bigger venue and, and we did it up. But um, there's been places in Toronto that I've made money as well. But everything comes down to connections and being treated right and and um when it comes to making money yeah uh it's about where you can secure like you can find a place in toronto it's all about your connections and who you know if you own if you live in toronto and you got a you got a, a connection with a place that you go to or you got a a waffle house or a restaurant you go to every day and you patron them and then you talk to them and they say yeah man i see you every day uh, like you, you hold an event here, then then do an event. Uh, there's a place in Mississauga that I use for bowling, and I've I've done bowling fundraisers there for like ten years. So the guy just about gives me the place now. He takes the alcohol, I get the lane sales and all that kind of stuff. Tickets. He shuts it down the whole day for me on the busiest day for me because I've been doing good business with him for so many years. Yeah. So you can establish relationships anywhere. It's just where your relationships are, your business relationships. If you have a good business relationship and it's like, and you can, and, and it's a win-win scenario, they're making money, you're making money. It can happen anywhere. There you go. There you go. Listen, man. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we can't keep him any much longer. Greg. 
one final question for you one final question for me and then we out of here all right i had a question about the ontario boxing hall of fame do you ever plan to make it like a physical location like like a museum or anything like that where you could actually go and see ontario's boxing history uh it was a physical location i got an office okay. uh, a few years back mm -hmm. at uh dixie and britannia okay and um it was a huge office uh five offices a showroom I had a big screen TV set up, leather couches. People could watch fights. Mm. Um, and I set up a GoFundMe to assist. Mm. I was paid, that office cost me $2,000 a month in rent. Mm. And, you know, um, for, for a lot of people that have never rented commercial property, when you rent commercial property, sometimes you got to sign a contract. So I had to sign a contract for a year and then um that we would reevaluate the the contract every other year so i was there for three years i spent two thousand dollars a month for that office and you know on my gofundme i got zero donations wow zero donations so um i already had the physical location okay. um do i plan to have one in the future yes but it's not going to be at my expense because i've already put my money forward and i saw that the boxing community didn't appreciate that which is okay um i've just got to find a venue that makes sense mm -hmm. where people will uh, appreciate the heritage yeah all right man you know what i'm gonna leave it right there because my final question was totally on the other side I i'm excited that uh you decided to take up this venture one and start the boxing Ontario Hall of Fame, highlighting fighters and and managers and stuff. Go ahead. The 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 Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame. There you go. What did I say? <laughs> the Boxing Ontario Hall of Fame. There you go. Say it for me again. <laughs> the Ontario Boxing the Hall Ontario of Fame. Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame. There yes, you go. Yes, sir. Yes, Make sir. Sure get it correct. <laughs> get it incorrect. But um, it's amazing for you to to uh you know want to start something like that and highlight it. And um, I know for myself and Greg who loves where it comes from, loves Ontario, loves Canada, loves Toronto. I want to see this sport grow to the highest level, and I'm willing to work and do whatever I need to do to ensure that that happens, and I know Greg is going to do the same. I want everybody to know, whether you're listening, you're peeking, the way in we are coming. We're coming to open up as much doors as we can to, you know what I'm saying, shine as much light on secrets as we can. Cause we want to make sure that those coming behind get an opportunity to reap the benefits of the work that we're putting in now you see, Absolutely. we've never had the opportunity to have two young lions you know what i'm saying who, who are hungry and ready to do whatever it takes to make sure the people win not the system system all the people and that's what we're here for this is what the winning show is all about so it was amazing that god has blessed us with an opportunity to meet you uh damien Opacio. Sure, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, can I, if, if I can say one, one thing? Yeah. The fact that there is not much happening here is a blessing because it shows that there's so much that can be done. A lot of people can eat here. Like when yeah. you look at the US, even though the population is bigger, right? But when you look at the US and the amount of big promoters that they have, you know, over there and everybody is making money. We can do the same thing here. The thing is for people to succeed, they got to get around the right people. They got to form the proper business. You know, for me, I, there, there's a couple of things I, I fundamentally always preach for the last 20 years. Yeah. Fighters yeah. always have a job. Fighters always have a job. And number two, make yourself a business. Everybody, every fighter should yeah. make themselves yeah. a business. Yeah. Gems, just gems, man. Gems just falling out of his pocket. Gems. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, because if, if a fighter set themselves up as, as a corporation, they paid the taxes, they learned about how a corporate entity works, you can set up a corporation and you can have non-voting shares set up. And if you're a fighter and you want financial help, sell your non-voting shares, man. And, and then just come up an orchestrated way where your shareholders are going to get value out of you progressing. You know, you can develop that with your team. And that way you can raise, if you're popular, you can raise 
a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars, even before you start your career. And and if you're going to the Olympics, you can do this even as an amateur. Then that that's gonna pay for your flights. It's gonna pay for your hotel. It's gonna pay for extra training. Like why the professional fighters here don't talk to the legends here? You got Nikki Ferlano. You got Troy Ross, two-time Olympian you know, fought for a world title. You got Steve Mull. Steve Mulliter should be making so much money just off one-on-one -on -one consulting with fighters. They should be bringing him into camps. If you're, if you're a fighter that, that is a slick fighter, um, and you want little pointers and, and find out Steve Muller is a two-time world champion. You don't have him in your camp consulting you and you're fighting. Oh my goodness. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Yeah. Man, Ooh, I'm telling you, dude, Bishop, some serious jewels, man. He's dropping some serious jewels. I but no, but but you know what? The, like, the the whole thing is because I can't I can't do everything in this sport, and there's so much room for everybody. There's so much room. Yeah. There's so much room, man. Everybody. Yeah, can on, on that note, we got. On that note, we got to end the show right now. We want to thank you. <laughs> can you drop your social media so the people can get an opportunity to, to reach out to you and ask yeah. you questions if they like. Yeah, they can they can find me on Facebook, uh, Damon Ocposio, um, below the belt, uh, the deal boxing sales if they're interested in any equipment, and um, you can find me on YouTube at the Deal Boxing Show on the uh, Damon Ocposio YouTube channel. All right, Damien, I just want to say you know thank you. I met you briefly a few years ago at the uh, Mayweather McGregor, but it was a pleasure to get to know you you know this in depth and uh, what you're all about. And like Francis said, man, you're dropping some gems that we all appreciate. And um, definitely good meeting you and good speaking to you. And we'd love to have you back on in the future, man. And you know what? I'm, I'm here for you guys, man. I appreciate what you do. It's needed. You guys are knowledgeable, entertaining. Um, and I like the way you, you, you do things. You gave me the opportunity. You know, my schedule is very busy. I always need a little bit of lead time. You guys gave me that. Um, I appreciate it, man. And, and the boxing community that tunes into you is going to progress and get better. So I hope your audience grows, man, because they need it. I appreciate it. Listen, do me one favor, Mr. Uh, Opasio. Yeah, sure. I'll take it. How, how, does, it how does it go, Greg? How does it go? Ocposio. 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 Yeah, That's, yeah. Why, That's why I know. Ocposio. Do me one favor. Just just hang on. Don't 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 go anywhere, okay? Okay. Hang tight real quick. Yo, Greg. Yes, sir. Like always... Another great show. Another great show. I man. thank you so very much, you know what I'm saying, for, you know, all that you're doing, the time that you put in. But first of all, I got to thank my Lord and Savior, you know what I'm saying, because without him, none of this would be possible. But you, man, the energy's always there. We see and we sink, and I appreciate it. It's all love. Yo, people out there, man, this is the Wayne Show. We're going to catch you on the other one. You know what it is, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 p.m. Right. Eastern time. Tell a friend to tell a friend, because like I've been saying from the beginning, you just never know who we're going to get on the way in. Because, listen, they come up here and they weigh in. And as you can tell that, yeah, my boy is heavyweight with his weight. You know what I'm saying? He is heavy, heavy. I appreciate it so very much. But like, you know, we always got to do, uh, we got to let the people know um, just how we we enjoy sports. We enjoy music, and uh, most of all, we enjoy life. And life is for the living. We have a lot going on right now. A lot of people, you know, the COVID is taking shutdowns and all these different things, and people are getting sick and people are getting depressed and all these mental issues that are happening with being inside and stuck inside. And if you live in a cold country where you don't have hot weather all the time, just being cold and inside, you know I mean, all the time, and you wake up, gloomy you go to bed gloomy kind of weighs on you so all i'm saying is yo tell a friend be be friendly to one another yep. you know what i'm saying say your hellos call and check up on somebody make sure they're all right you know what i'm saying wash your hands wear your face mask and stay away from them covid parties man they don't do you no good you understand we're trying to get back to chilling and hanging out with one another but until then we got to do what we got to do yes sir like always just give us a few seconds you did Hold up, it's the weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should we crank it up again? Hold up.
way in. Pull up in your way in. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing, and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up, hold up. Greg and friends just keep it popping, keep it popping. Dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics. Switch it up. The latest interviews. Okay, okay, we got. It. Okay, we got it. your favorite podcast, my boy. Yeah, we the hottest. Hold up, you got a way in. Articulate, explain it, explain it. Let it all out for debate and drop some game. No, we ain't playing. Two squad fans, let me know where you at. It's all about a fight. You got that strap. All your biases get slayed. Let you boys duck in the fade. Hold up, it's the way in. Call up and you way in. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold up. You already know, man. We're going to catch you on the next one. Peace and love to everybody out there, man. We out.